What's happening, y'all? That is a polka. It's a tune called the Ballyvorney. At least that's what Tune Pal told me it was called. Hoping that's correct. I don't do a lot of polkas on this channel, and I figured it might be kind of time to get back to one. Also, I played a session yesterday and that tune came up, so it was stuck in my head, and I thought it'd be worth giving it a blast. Before we dive in though, thanks a bunch to all of you who have commented on the last video, got in on the contest for the uh, Dixon Whistle, which I don't have right here, otherwise I could have demonstrated it. If you haven't got in on that video yet, feel free to click the link. I'll put it up here, wherever that goes. Check it out, and uh, do the thing, and uh, you can get in on the contest if you want to win that whistle. We'll do the drawing next week, so stick around for that. Also, I'm on TikTok. I don't think I really mentioned that much on here. Um, I'm a little too old for it, but it's kind of fun, and I'm posting stuff pretty much every day. I'm really only posting long-form videos here on YouTube about once a week, and there's short stuff behind the scenes and other kind of tips and little goofy things on there. I'm not dancing, I can promise you that, but if you feel like checking it out, my link is down below. Uh, give me a shout. All right, on to this tune. Here's our basic melody, nice and slow polkas. Um, they can be played at Mach 3, which makes them sound incredibly challenging, when a lot of times the melodies are very simple and repetitive, which is nice. And as with all things in Irish music that are simple, the devil's in the details. So that's where you can make it complicated and, and find a lot, of, uh, a lot of fun space in between the notes. But here's the basic melody, starting with the A part. and that would repeat. I'll play it one more time just to see if you can jump in here. Uh, we'll still play it nice and slow though. And then the second time through it does finish just a little bit differently um, because it, it dovetails into the B part. So I'll play the B part here, and then we'll just kind of come back and talk about that transition once we get the basic melody down. So here's the B part, nice and simple, basic melody. That's the first section anyway. Hopefully you've been working on your arpeggios. Um, that's an important bit in this tune, as it is an important bit in a lot of tunes. Here's the second part. So the second part ends the same way that the A part does. So you've already got that, hopefully, make it a little bit easier. I'll play the whole B part all the way through. Um, jump in, play along. Again, just like there's a bit of a difference in how the A part ends the second time through, the B part's the same way. So let's just talk about those little joining phrases first before we come in back with the ornaments. So that ending phrase, really in both cases, that's how it ends both times. Two E's back to back. Now when you're jumping between parts, between the A part and the B part, or between the B part and the turnaround back to the A part again, So it just goes up to that F sharp as sort of a pickup note um, to get you around to that next phrase. Hopefully that makes sense. The ornaments that I would play on the A part are sort of confined by the fact that I'm, it's mostly in the lower hand, um, the bottom hand. So there's, I try to keep it fairly simple. Uh, basic melody get on the A part. It's mostly just a, a kind of a few turns on the bottom hand. So. That's really about all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a double tap on that F sharp, and then a cut, um, just because I can get those fairly cleanly and consistently, I think. You could tap that. You could do that, and then you could also slide into that F sharp. That's a nice, simple, smooth kind of thing that I would do too. 
And then as I go from the F sharp to that D, that's one that, um, depending on how quick this tune is, I may get, I may not. Um, it, it may not sound clean if the tune's really ripping along at Mach 3, but it's that popping earthquake ornament that I've talked about a few times, going from F sharp to D. And as I go from that, uh, I, from the F sharp and land on the D, it's like it's popping this top finger off. That's kind of my goofy earthquake analogy there. So I land these two fingers and knock that top finger off. And then when you do it quickly, it's just a cool popping ornament. That's, I think it sounds kind of nice there. So I don't always get it because it has to be fairly quick. And if the tune is too fast, it might not sound, but. Now that top phrase, that, that one that is the, the turn phrase that repeats both in the A part and the B part, I'm doing two things. I'm doing a cut on the B, and I'm really I'm tonguing to get into that cut so that there's a good solid separation to really accent that note. No. Uh, sorry. And then I do that cut, and then I do a triplet, uh, my very favorite rhythmic triplet. Ah. And then just a simple tap on the E if we're doing one of those where it's just the back-to-back -back E's. If we're doing the turn, I'll slide off of that E into the F sharp. Um, again, just to really sell the fact that it's a little bit different. We're doing something different here, going into the B part. When we get there, we've got a lot of arpeggios. Uh, so that's what I'd be playing, just bouncing, double tapping that F sharp. Subtle, it's not a huge honking grace note, but that's why I like it. It's simple and it's kind of clean. It is another one that has to be kind of quick, so it might get lost if the tune's played at, at a really high tempo. Just something to keep in mind. Uh, anyway, uh, when I go to that F sharp, I really like to slide that note because that's one of those unique physics things on the whistle. I'll almost always slide a C sharp like that. I think I may have said F sharp. Did I say F sharp before? C sharp, if you slide into that C sharp, that same earthquake ornament that I did down here on the F sharp to D, you can also do uh, going from B to A. Uh, so, again. As I land that A finger down, it pops the top finger off. Nice and quick, needs to be nice and quick in order to keep up with, with, the, with the fast tune. So. Then that phrase, the, the ending phrase is the same. The same triplet I would do, same slide into the tap on the E, and then the, the, the repeat is the same way. Uh, uh, As it comes back around, um, you can do the same thing sliding into the F sharp. So a lot of repetition with this tune. It's fun, it's kind of, um, it's unusual, I think. Um, it, the structure is a little odd. We used to play this as a middle tune in the set. Maybe I'll come back and hit the other two polkas that we did with it. Let me know what y'all think. Uh, yeah, see you guys in the next one. Cheers.